I'm in Florida to help a struggling hotel on the beach. A young owner at the helm who has no control over his staff. What is that? Oh, boy. Why it's like that, I have no idea. <coughs> I'm faced with many challenging situations. It stinks in here. This is filthy. Really bad. And I'm unsure if I can turn this place around. Your chef has shut down. I can't work like this. I want to go now. I want to get the fuck out of here. Midway between Orlando and Miami, on Florida's Atlantic coast, lies the small town of Fort Pierce, home to the beachfront inn and inlet. Owner Brian Paul opened it in 2012 after running his family's successful local fish market with his brother. My job before the inlet was the, the CEO, the head of my dad's fish market. My dad ran a business like a, uh, a real leader. He had so many friends pillar of the community. Everybody loved him, and uh, I always knew as a child I wanted to have my own place. I think Brian has a lot of schooling under his belt. I'm not exactly sure that he has any hotel experience. Brian, as an owner, is physically here sometimes. He's just, like, kind of wanders around. Brian is a little too easygoing. If it was me, I'd have my hands, nose, eyes, and ears in everything, and I don't see him doing that. Brian definitely has a lot of friends that work here, uh, some of which have taken advantage of him in the past. Um, I believe that Chef Ben probably has taken most advantage of him. I want a beer. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're having a tasty beer tonight, boys. Yeah. Ben is a, uh, an awesome guy. I've known him forever. We've been friends forever. I give him plenty of space. I help him whatever he needs, but I don't muddle in his affairs down there. I think that the issue here has been our lack of consistency with our food, and, and I mean, that directly has to be attributed to the executive chef. You know, his name is Ben. I feel like the inlet and the beachfront both lack direction. We're trying to be too many things at once. A nightclub, a bar, a restaurant, a hotel, a wedding venue, a concert venue, a place to do your Christmas party at. I mean, ah. No military secret. We have some guests and employees hooting and hollering until the wee hours of the morning. And that's out of control. That's got to stop. It's bad for business. Brian has to refund hotel guests money because of the noise complaints. I think this place has so much potential and so much to offer. We don't want to see it fail. We don't want to see Brian fail. He definitely needs to step up and help us all out to help him. He needs to grab those reins and start, start seeing the damage that's happening and uh, start fixing it. Today, I'm in the beautiful coastal town of Fort Pierce, Florida. Just looking around, you're surrounded by stunning beaches, marinas full of deep sea fishing boats. This place is gorgeous. Look at this place. It looks like the hotel's closed down. Hello. Anybody in? Welcome. Thank How you. How are you? I'm very well indeed, thank you. First name is? Liza. Good Liza. to meet you. Liza, good to see you. How are you doing today? Whose is this? The boss man caught it. And where's the other half gone? <laughs> Maybe they ate it. Belt, I don't know. Pair of shoes. <laughs> Couldn't tell you. It is a What do you weird. use it for? I don't use it for anything, actually. Wow. And what's that up there? That was here when I got here, believe it or not. That's for sale? Apparently so, yes. So he went onto the beach, picked uh -huh. up some driftwood, and then mm -hmm. dipped it in some varnish. Yep. Oof. <laughs> $22. Uh-huh. Stop. Same as that one over there. No. <laughs> Insane, no? <laughs> Have you sold any of these? No. Never? No. Seriously. And how much for the T-shirts? Between $12 for employees and $18 for guests. So staff have to pay for their own T-shirts? Yes. And for the guests, they're $18? Yes. Wow. So when was the last time you sold a T-shirt? I sell them every day, but mostly to um, the employees. The employees? <laughs> yes. How long have you been here? The establishment's been here almost three years. I've been wow. here almost three years as well. What's wrong with it? 
from your um, point of view? Noise levels, you know, especially the one directly above the restaurant that... What kind of noise? Because it's not the... The music and the people, the foot traffic, everybody wow. hanging out at the bar and things wow. of that nature. So that goes on directly underneath? Yes. Mm -hmm. They end up being refunded, and then they end up putting us on blast on all of these, you know, websites and social media and just bad reviews left and right. Housekeeping, come back. What's that for? Touch base with the housekeepers. Wow. Have a good one. Um, just out of interest, uh, it's Gordon here. I've just checked in. How far away are the fucking rooms? I mean, you sound like you're miles away. Hello, madam? <laughs> you scared her. So, room 16. Yes, um, sir. And where is it, please, Donnie? I'm going to direct you. Right this way. What's that thing there? We grill our wings on it. You grill your wings on it? Yes. How often do you grill wings in there? Every stinking day. Wow. Jesus. In fact, I think there's a wing left in there. <laughs> when was that grilled? Chances are it could have been yesterday. Those are the extra crispy ones. <laughs> and who's responsible for this? The kitchen handles all of this end of it, of course. You found another charbroiled. And these were done yesterday? I believe so. And they cook every day on here? Yes. And are the customers still alive? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> right, room 16. Let's yes, go. sir. This is your Caribbean building. The Caribbean. Caribbean, Caribbean, yes. Um, uh huh. What these part the... of this resembles the Caribbean? I think it's more so because of the view. Oh, the view. Right here, sir. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Whew. Look at this. Wow. It stinks in here. There's a very sort of damp, musty smell. Bloody hell. Oh, the bed feels like it's 15 years old. Oh, it smells. Curtains are terrible. Oof. The place is filthy. Really bad. Absolutely disgusting. $180 a night for this shit hole. Oof. Wow. Mini bar. Consisting of absolutely fuck all. Freezer, over frozen and defrosted about 10 years ago. What a mess. I know when I'm coming to fix a business, they have various issues. But right now, with the information I have, I am not impressed with how Brian, as an owner, is operating this hotel. Hello. Hello, welcome to the inlet. So you must be Brian. I am, sir. The hotelier and the 34-year-old. I do it all. You do it all. Is that what you are, seriously, 34? Right. You know what? I'm 33. I work so hard, I think I just thought I was 34. You're 33. <laughs> Fuck me. Um, did you call this building the Caribbean? Yes. Have you ever been to the Caribbean? Yeah. Which part? Uh, the Bahamas. And this has been modeled on the Bahamas? Correct. Do you smoke when you're in the Bahamas? You know, like that. I've tried a couple times, surely. Okay. Stop. Yeah, yeah. That's... What hotel in the Caribbean or the Bahamas were you running before you bought this one? So I've just visited the Caribbean. I've never ran a hotel in the Caribbean. So you just go buy yourself a 25-bedroom hotel on the beach with a bar and... All I know how to do is run a fish market when I open this, and I built it from the scratch, from the ground up. So the fish is fresh, obviously from the market. They're so fresh. Right. I better jump in. Can I show you to your table? Uh, yes, why not, yeah. <laughs> table for you right here. Excellent, thank you. May I? Uh, please. I'm excited for the fresh fish. It's so surreal, bro. Gordon Ramsay's in the dining room. What's with the name tags? I mean, you're the owner, right? I think I should lead by example, so I, I, I like to wear mine. That way, if I tell them that they need to wear them, then they can't say, well, Brian, you don't wear yours. Right. I'm starving. I'm going to get you some food I'm right starving. away. I'm going to get you a great server. OK, great. How are you? How you doing? Nice I'm to good. see you. Likewise. My name is Kelly. Kelly, how long have you been here? Um, I've been here about a year. Nice. Mm -hmm. And um, why do the staff have to buy their T-shirts? Um, I don't. I was never told. Even our first shirts, our name tags. You buy your name tag as well. Yeah. We have to pay like eight dollars. Never and seen that before. <laughs> eight dollars a name tag. Twelve dollars a T-shirt. That's twenty dollars before we come to fucking work. Wow. As I look at the menu, I notice it's absolutely massive. So, I decided to order the chicken wings, which honestly, I wasn't surprised when they were dry. 
Then I had the lobster mac and cheese, which technically isn't mac and cheese because they use penne pasta. But the worst part of my lunch was the tuna burger, which I knew wasn't quite right. Is that fresh? It is frozen. Oh, it's frozen? Yes. Hold on, you said it's fish market, fresh fish daily. Frozen fish, fresh fish, what's going on? We use frozen sometimes, sure. And you have a fish market that you buy from? Yeah, yep, yeah. Um, I'm confused. Ever since about four months ago, everything was fresh, everything. I ran up a little bit of a bill with my brother. So we cut back and started ordering some of the frozen stuff from some of the purveyors. And what's the feedback? We get some negative feedback. He hasn't had one nice thing to say. I know, it's a blow to the ego, but he knew it was going to be something. I think it was going to be everything. Um, explain this monstrosity. What in the fuck is going on here? This is our kiosk. Kiosk. An effort to have products for right. all sorts of people. So beach volleyballs, towels, volleyballs, uh, uh, bean bags, shirts, sick bags. How, how busy is this? How was it going? I honestly, uh, it doesn't do that good. How many beach towels have you sold? Not too many beach towels. All right. Show me one. All right. Be right back. Uh, I'd love to see one, please. What a fucking disaster. We're on the beach and we don't have towels. What is wrong with this picture? How was lunch? OK. OK is not good enough. Ah, I thought we lost you. Thank you very much. Whenever you're ready to go to the beach. Whenever I'm ready to go to the beach. Wow. How many do you have in stock? One. Uh, <laughs> you got it. Uh, That's the one. OK, can you charge that to my room, please? Yes, I so will. So we're sold out now? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. At lunch, I was very disappointed that Brian falsely advertises fresh fish on his menu. I want to learn more about how involved he is as an owner during an evening at the beachfront. Checking in, Susan Addison. Can I go ahead and start you off with something to drink? OK. <laughs> Smoke them if you got them. OK, Ben. Hey, Chef. Uh, just give, give us a little quick run through how the uh, line works. Well, normally I run the pass and right. expo. Chef, I'll take care of this. Boom, boom, boom. Use the pass through the saute guy and then the fry guy. Working with Ben, I can't really tell you what he does. Where's Brian? Don't know, Chef. And Brian would just avoid him instead of trying to get to the root of the problem. And I think that in itself is a problem. How long have you been here? Uh, since last December. Oh, wow. So you've been here a long time? Yeah. In your mind, what do you think the major problems are? Lack of consistency, lack, yeah. as a matter of fact, and lack of structure. Yeah. yeah, I saw that lunchtime. Yeah. I found out about the fish not being so fresh. How so, can you not sell fresh fish when you're on the beach? That's our motto, fresh fish. So how many of them do you think understand that we're selling frozen fish? They probably don't. No. Because I don't think the servers are telling no. them. <laughs> Meanwhile, the customers disappear. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Great update. Thank you. thank you. Brian, how many of these customers in tonight know that you're serving frozen food? You know, they don't really know how the uh, the market works, so probably none of them. They don't know how the market works. They, they, they don't understand. Sorry. Uh, how are you? Good, hey, how are you? Do you think we're going to be serving frozen food tonight or fresh fish? Fresh. 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 Why fresh? Well, we're on the beach. Well, why don't you explain to him tonight that you changed things four months ago and we're not serving fresh fish anymore, we're serving frozen. Man up. So uh, just a few months ago, we switched from some of our fresh products to some of frozen seafood products. But why would you do that? They're quality products. They just aren't the best of quality that you would expect from you know the Pelican yeah. seafood market. They're quality frozen products. Yeah, it's it's a cost thing. So when I come out to somewhere like this, being on the beach, of course, I would hope to have yeah. fresh fish. Where is this fucking freezer? It's around here. Uh, Where do you keep the frozen? Right down here, Gordon. Let's have a look. So this is the frozen bit here. What's that? Frozen avocado. Are we not in Florida? And you can't make fresh avocado? Dude, this is fucked. Where's the freezer? Excuse me. Main walk-in. Wow, wow, wow. When was the last time you were in here? I come in here once a week, at least, and I once a kinda, week. you know, just kind of look around or whatever. What is this? Wow. 
Oh, man. Look at that. The water's gone slimy. And you come in here once a week. Yeah. What is that? Oh, boy. Fucking hell. What is that? Pina colada. Pina colada. Why it's like that, I have no idea. It's festered. It's, it's, it's off. It's bubbling. Oh, man. That's terrible. Fuck. Trash, please. <laughs> trash. <coughs> James, trash, please, now. Pina colada. Right down the drain. By the bucket load in the walk-in fridge. I mean, who in the hell operates like this? Gordon, this is Chef Ben's job. He's the executive chef. He's the executive chef. And you made him that executive chef, right? Sure I did. How'd you feel now? What's that? Tuna burger. That's from the burger? Yes, it is. Oh, my god. Seriously? Bacon. It's gone. It's, it's, it's off. Fresh produce on top of old produce. Moldy. And this one? Ribeye. Ribeye defrosting. Yeah. What is this? Those are the smoke grilled chicken wings before they go onto the char grill. Oh, my god. And what is in this one? You are kidding me. So underneath in that bucket is what? Cooked product. Cooked chicken. Mm -hmm. And on top of it is what? It's raw. Raw chicken on top of cooked chicken. I had them for lunch. I am at a fucking loss. Do you know the best way out of this? It's just to shut the place down. It's not an option for me. What's that in there, Ben? Those are marinated chicken wings. Yeah. To be smoked. Underneath, next box. Those are smoked. Rule number fucking one. Ben. I know. Chef, I didn't do it. You know, I turned my back for a minute, and this is the kind of shit that happens. And I walked in, and it was bedlam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's telling me this is your fault. You've got no idea. I am at an absolute fucking loss. I can't work like this. This is huge. You now are running a restaurant cross-contaminated. Joey. Yes, Chef. Who's responsible for this? Um, we all are. The, the, the entire kitchen is, Chef. Rule number one. You can't put hot food in a fucking walk-in. It doesn't even go together. No, not at all. Nowhere near each other. I guarantee you, when it was put in there after I marinated it, they weren't shuffled. I can give you 12 more issues in there that are bad. I mean, you are heading for a fucking massive disaster. I, I mean, who the hell put them on top of the, the other ones? Everybody in here knows Brian, better. If I, if I Haven't knew, you I... trained everybody to know that? Yeah. I mean... All I'm getting right now is excuses. The yeah. kitchen needs direction from the chef, the staff need direction from the owner, and your buddies. Can someone come up with a fucking solution? I'm gonna go in 86 the wings. Sort it out quickly. Come on, guys. 86 wings! Someone put raw fucking chicken wings on top of cooking. It wasn't me. Somebody else did it. 86 wings is the only thing I can do right now. What in the fuck is going on? I was baffled and amazed. The words out of Ben's mouth were, no, oh, I clean that cooler regularly every day. You want me to go in there and pull everything out, clean it? That is not your job to wipe the ass of an executive chef. I, I know that. There were weeks he wouldn't show up, but maybe three days a week. Why didn't Brian step up? Brian, he may be oblivious to some of this stuff. They've known each other since they were young guys, so, you know. This is crazy. Team. So Ben goes AWOL, Brian does nothing about it, the place starts falling apart, and then he just steps back in when he wants. Pretty much, pretty much. But if this was your business, you wouldn't tolerate that. Yeah, I would have fired Ben a long time ago. I, I was all for firing Ben two months ago, so, I mean... Um... No excuse for that walk-in like that, so... I'm sorry, I, I just couldn't hold back anymore. He doesn't go. He doesn't come to work. That's the reason why it looks like that, okay? That is absolutely the reason why. If he's here by 12 and he leaves by 5, we're lucky. I'm just... I'm not James is telling me the truth. I'm, 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 I'm here to tell you the truth. You're not telling me the I truth. I promise you I'm going to tell you the truth. The only way to really, truly identify a chef before you even taste his food is to open up his walk-in. That speaks volumes for any chef. He's a chef that's given up and going through the motions. Sometimes I feel that way. 
We've been through a lot. I know he's got a lot on his plate. He's incompetent, and he's taking your fucking business down. You know, I, I don't think he's incompetent. You're fucking mad. And the sad thing is that your staff and your management and your team see it, and you're the only person that doesn't know what's going on. And this is the way you want to run your business. Yeah. Oh, you do not need my help. What's up, party people? <laughs> Wow, that's loud, that music. It is loud. Oh, man. What are you doing? Yeah, I just need a little piece of quiet. Oh, um, not you a good? problem. That's crazy, no? Yes, it is. I mean, it's like the blind leading the blind in there because there's no discipline. That you know, I do know. Ben's checked out, Brian's never checked in, and uh, they're all blaming each other. Yeah, I do know there's no, there's no discipline, there's no communication, no. there's none of it. No. What's the problem with him stepping up and dealing with issues. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that he, he's not fully um, experienced in certain no. de departments. No. Are they hosting concerts? Are they... Uh, is it a frat party hangout? Is it a college? I mean, how can they call themselves a hotel? That's, that's the difference. That's the part that we need to try to separate, and I've been saying it for a while. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Good evening. Beach front end. Liza speaking. How can I help you? Hi, Liza. We're in room 20. Bad reaction. She had to take steroids, and it's supposed to be a non-smoking room. I'll be right with you. Ryan, there's two guests have checked in upstairs. Okay. Uh, she's uh, she's got an issue with an allergy because the room stinks of smoke. It'd be nice to just come up and see them or try and calm the situation down. So the lady's got an allergy and she's already had to take a steroid, and her eyes are streaming and she's not very happy. Okay. Hello. Hello. So, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. You sure? Any issues? Oh. Water all over the floor. <laughs> Sorry? We had water all over the floor. Water all over the floor? The what? refrigerator. There's water on the floor. In oh, the no, room. really? Yeah. I just cleaned it up with a okay. towel. Yeah, you still I see something. I'm mind. sorry. Damn. I walked in. It was, a... it was completely all the way to the bed. Wow. Let's, uh, let's, let's come back. Let's go into the to see that lady. Well, the ladies, her eyes are streaming. Do excuse us. Ladies, are you decent? Sorry, I've got the owner here. I think we've figured out what oh, really? that smell is. There's yeah. all dust inside it. Oh, shit. There you go. It's just my eyes are tearing. When was that cleaned last? That's a, uh, that's really a daily thing that, um... Daily? It should be, sure, yeah, absolutely. That is not daily. Uh... Look at that. That's why. Oh. Jesus Christ almighty. No one of the poor ladies broken out. It's like the back of my throat is all scratchy. Is there an alternative room we can use for the ladies? I'll double check right away. Have a drink downstairs, a little bite to eat, but we can sort something out. Okay. The big problem here is that there's no direction for the hotel, for the restaurant, for the gazebo, not even for the car park. Ben is like a headless chicken that's checked out, and Brian's like this scared school kid that is not qualified to run a fucking beach bar, let alone a hotel on a beach. So... <sighs> this is bad. This is really grim. Brian! Am I wrong? I feel like we blew it tonight. No, man, it's just it's, it's what it is, you know? We don't, uh, don't worry, man. Oh, for God's sake. After a very frustrating night, I woke up this morning hopeful that Brian would be eager to admit his faults at the beachfront. But that wasn't the case. Even after a staff meeting, none of the problems are sinking in with Brian. So I reached out to his brother Eric, 
who is continuing to fund the business and I'm hoping Brian can start to see the damage he has done. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for coming in. Why is Ramsey here? Your brother just asked you a question. Why did you call me here? I've got uh, a lot of issues that uh, I need to take care of. You don't look like a man that's in pain. You don't look like a man that's struggling. You don't look like a man that's lost control. You look like you're bouncing around, having fun. The business is hurting. You're hurting your brother's business, and you're not realizing it. It does re reach a ceiling where, where Brian, you're going to have to get cut off. I will, I'll respect it, but you gotta let me know how much time and I'll, 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 I'll make it. I'll make it. Two more months, but then that's it. Two months. Here's my promise. I will focus so hard and I will be able to pay you in eight weeks. I'll pay you in eight weeks. I'll pay you in eight weeks. 30 grand. You gotta, you, 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 you gotta give me, you gotta give me 90 days. I mean, you gotta give me 90 days. He's just given you eight weeks. You've just asked for 12 weeks. Correct. You can't continue depending on your little brother's cash to float your dreams. I just need you to make sure not to screw this one up again. I'm not gonna screw it up. I'm not convinced. I'm no, 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 no. You're lucky he's your fucking brother. Aaron, I got you. Eight months. Eight weeks. Eight weeks or you're cut off. That's all there is to it, man. How important is your reputation to you? That's the most important thing in my world. And on a scale of one to ten, your reputation in this town now. I gave myself a good, a good eight. A good eight. A good, good, a solid strong eight. eight. Absolutely. So these are customers that have gone out their way to spend their hard-earned cash supporting your business. You must recognise a few of these faces. Absolutely, I do. Let's start off with the lady in the blue shirt. You know her very well. Hey, play. Hi, Brian. How do you know each other? Uh, I market Brian. You're a spokesperson for that business. Yes. Can you be honest with this one? Yes, I can. The service is very bad. I've brought people here. I've been up at the bar myself trying to order even just a water. That's been tough. Do you not listen to the advice in terms of sloppy service? I, I absolutely, I, I listen, I do listen, I do listen, I do listen. Do you offload that to your team? No, I don't, I don't. So that's why it's not dealt with. Sir, your experience? We ordered a chicken sandwich. When the chicken sandwich came out, it was raw. It was raw and it was mushy in the middle. I could have got sick from that. And I love your bar because I can come here late night and I can get free drinks. Two for me and two for my buddy and pay for one, we got five. Wow. Unbelievable. Sir? My first experience here was a Super Bowl party that you advertised and uh, actually had some out of town guests. Food was very mediocre. The crab cakes were like sawdust. They were horrible that night. After the game was over, a couple of rowdy fans started a little brawl. Uh, we had drinks thrown on us. Wow. The other thing I'd like to say is, if I'm staying on the ocean, I love to fall asleep with the window open and hear the ocean. You can't do that here. You hear music all night long. I honestly stayed here myself once. I tried to call down because um, our sheets were dirty. You couldn't even call, like nobody answered. And literally, I think the biggest problem for me is the mixed message. It's like, are you a bar or are you a restaurant? Because we're paying $150 for dinner. However, there's people walking in in bikinis, drunk. Damn. Listen, this feedback has been crucial. Anything you'd like to say? Thank you, guys. You guys rock, man. Right, thanks. Thank you. I'm telling you, make you proud, I promise right. you. <laughs> right, <it's a> <laughs> Let's go. It's not a time for high-fiving. I'm fucking embarrassed. What the fuck are you hugging them sure. for? I know that they care. I do know they care. A raw chicken sandwich. But that's not an eight. That is not an eight out of 10. And do you think they're set up? Do you think this is a TV show and we're just going to spout off? These people aren't exaggerating. They're real. They're real customers. You're turning into a laughing stock. Yeah, no, it's not good. The jury's out with me. I've never come this far and still sat on the fence in an undecided way. 
but fucking listen up and listen carefully. The partying, the free-for-all, I'm paying for one drink, they're giving me five in front of your eyes. Tomorrow, you turn up here looking like an owner. Understood. You got a lot on your plate, but get your head out the fucking clouds and get real. Fuck off. I've got this, Gordon. I'll yeah. show you. Even though I wasn't won over by Brian's commitment, I went ahead and designed a new concept for the beachfront. My team and I completely overhauled the rooms and added a beach club to the unused outdoor space. I'm really hoping Brian can see the potential he has to offer. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I wish it was a good morning. What did I ask you to come into work today? What did I say? What was the one thing I said to you? Come in as a... Boss. A boss. Right now, you look like a towel boy. I mean, sunglasses around your neck, badge on there, shorts on there. Who are you? Give me the name badge. Stand out from the crowd. You're the owner. I've had a really rough night, and so has my team. Get out of here, get changed, and come back like an owner. Now, fuck off. Ready. <clears throat> Honestly. Gordon. Hurry up. No, 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 no. I'm not listening. Gordon, I'm coming back like a boss. I'm ready to make this whole Fort get, Pierce community prep. Gordon. Get out of here. Seatbelt on. No doors and no seatbelt. Oh, my God. I'll, I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be ready. Brian returned looking like an owner, and I'm hoping that translates into his role as a boss. Let's go. Jerry, ah, quick step, let's wow. go. It's time to reveal to Brian and his staff the newly renovated beachfront inn and inlet. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Man. This is what I envisioned. Wow. Oh, wow, wow. First of all, this is not the spring break hangout that's gone wrong. This is a proper beachfront room. Sweet. <sighs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's an inlet. It's oh, home. Oh, my God. Whoa, the floor. I love it. It's, it's perfect. But you've got a tangible asset here that can help lift this business and, more importantly, start making money. Awesome. Brian, you need to get a grip of this business and you need to realise, you know, what's at stake here. I need to be convinced. I need to see you stepping up as a boss. Ben and Jerry, we're relaunching that restaurant tonight. So. I'm gonna go through with that menu, jump downstairs, get organized, and start finding your way. Let's go. Oh, oh man. After observing dinner service, I saw the beachfront kitchen wasn't set up to handle such a massive menu. So I redesigned a smaller menu that is easy for Ben to execute. Okay, guys, small menu, let's run from the top. Appetizers, lobster mac and cheese done with the correct pasta, Ben. Steamed clams, again, great sharing for the table wings off the smoker, so it stays nice and crisp. And a chicken cob salad. Entrees, pan-seared scallops. Easy, three sears, ahi tuna, fresh. And then, of course, the mahi-mahi. It's small, it's inviting, and tonight, I've just been told that we've got the mayor in for dinner. There's one person we can reach out to to send the message back in the community, this is it. Dig in. Mm -hmm. That sauce is fabulous. Oh, my God. Wow. It's time to relaunch the beachfront. I've put a plan in place, and I'm really hoping Brian can finally show me that he's ready to run his business. All right, everybody, listen up. Tonight is a big service. There's not many opportunities like this. You have to take advantage of it. I need you guys all to get together right now and bring it in. One, two, three, go! go away! Away! Brian, Brian, let's just get real for a couple of seconds, yep. yeah? Yes, sir. You forgot the fucking most important thing tonight. Who is in for dinner tonight? You haven't even told the staff. Possibly the most important person in this town. We have the mayor in tonight, you guys. The mayor, and that's just not something that happens every fucking week. You have to bring it together tonight. You have to work as a team. 
Sort it out, guys. We're opening Next. in five minutes. Come on. Checking in. Yes. All right. Welcome to the inlet. Good evening, good evening. This is lovely. Um, enjoy dinner. An amazing array of appetizers, and the entrees are to die for. Tortoise in the hair, slow and steady wins the race. So, first ticket on, yes? Yeah. Good. Hi, how are you? Welcome Hi, to guys. Just the two of us tonight? It's the mayor. Okay. Yeah. That's the mayor. Now, where are you sitting at? Come on, where? Well, they were gonna. They were gonna... Well, give her a choice. We'd like to sit inside or outside. It's her choice. Welcome. How are you? Thank you for coming in. So nice to Thank see you. Thank you, guys. Likewise. Um, it's an absolute you. pleasure. I'll leave you in the hands of our manager, owner, Brian. Follow me, guys. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank John, you. good to see you, sir. Nice Likewise. You. Okay, guys. All right, Mayor, wherever you'd like inside. I got a chicken burger ready at your leisure. Chicken burger? Ben, as Brian told you, the mayor's in. No, no he no. has not. Unreal. Brian, your chef doesn't even know the mayor's in. Ah. You don't think he deserves to know? Come yes, on. he does. Come on, then. Ben? Yes. Mayor's in at table seven. Heard table seven. Inside. Am I good, Ben? I've got that black and chicken for you. And that's it. Ben, you need to be the captain. And right now, I'm not convinced. Let's get serious about this business and do this. Is the mayor's order in? Have they sent their appetizers yet? Yes, it is. Have they, have, yes, they, have they hit the table? No, I put their food in. He wanted the salad and the fried calamari, and she wanted the uh, mahi. Mahi, OK, great. So again, check it. That's your hot ticket tonight. But do you know what's happening in your kitchen at the moment? No, look at me. Do you know what's happening in there? You haven't got a fucking clue. Yeah, get into the kitchen, find out what's going on. Let's go. Behind you. Ow, that burnt my forehead. Oh, man. Excuse me. So what did you guys order? Um, I got the mahi-mahi and a salad, and he got an appetizer. The mayor is the only person sat with nothing in front of her. Please. All right, two tunas. Can I have a table of 15's appetizers ASAP? It's the mayor. 15? 15. I was told seven. Fucking hell. Sorry, miscommunication. They're sat on 15, right? I made a mistake, it's 15. Okay, I need two house salads right now, before anything else. Right in a second. Brian didn't know what table the mayor was at. It seems like the biggest thing Brian changed was his wardrobe. Two house are in the window. Two house need to go, 15. Have you seen the salads? No. Ben, yes, sir. you need to see that. You need to taste that and see everything he's doing there. Terry, that's too much dressing, bro. Redo it. Salad's overdressed, right. soggy as shit, wrong dressing. Ben. Yes, sir. What I need to hear is a bit of a voice. If we go silent, we'll go down. For tonight's relaunch of the beachfront. Salad's overdressed, right. soggy as shit, wrong dressing. I was really hoping Brian would step up as an owner, given that I put everything in place for him to succeed. God damn it, dude. But his lack of focus has me really worried that he's not fit to run this place. Come on, Brian. Come, Come on, Ben. Bye. Oh, Come here. Come here, let's go. Your chef has shut down. I didn't realize it. You didn't realize. So the first two salads for the mayor had the wrong dressing on and were overdressed. I said, if you taste them, he said no. So he hasn't got your back. When's that penny going to drop that you're going to turn the corner? I we'll watch Ben. If he doesn't come out of it, we'll switch him and Joey. Will you? How many guacamoles you guys got out there? Okay. Okay. Eight. Chicken, 30 seconds. Give me time on the mayor's table, please, Ben. Table 15? Yeah, the mayor's table. We sold it. Calamari and uh, mahi. Did you see it before it went? I sure did. I played it everything. The mayor hasn't got a fucking food. Brian, Brian, urgently, come here. So Ben's told me the fucking mayor's got their food. Right. And look at the mayor's table. Uh, There's nothing on there. Look at me. Look, look now. Hey, we're about to go down. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to get in my fucking car and I'm going to get the fuck out of here if you don't get a grip. Because this is a fucking joke. Now, you better get in there and tell your executive chef, Ben, that the mayor hasn't got their food and find out where the fuck it is. Ben, the mayor's not gotten her food. I'll put it in the window. Where, where is the I'll make it right food? now. I'll make it right now. It'd be nice to have some food right about there. Let's try the mayor's food again. Jerry, I need a 
Caesar now. It's coming right now, Gina. Put her up. Where's that going? 51. 51. Come here, you. What is that? Undercooked. That is undercooked. Uh, young lady, come here. What does that chicken look like to you? Thank you. So it's dry. Um, young lady, how would you describe that chicken? Uh, looks kind of dry. Very dry. Very dry. Uh, you're not even a chef, are you? Mm -hmm. No. Never no. Cooked. How old are you? I'm 20. 20. Thanks, Stella. Mm -hmm. So from a 20-year-old server who's never cooked, even she spotting it's dry. And you're saying it's raw. Let me tell you something. And listen carefully. I'm going. I'm packing my bags, because that is the worst thing we've sent all week. It's overcooked and it's dry. And then you, you tell me it's raw. Good night. I'm done. That is unreal. I mean, I'm so pissed off. I can't give that guy any more advice. I can't continue to tell him to step up and make decisions. He has a chef in there that's just riding him and riding the business. And when you're weak, you've got no chance of running a business. And what a shame. Un fucking real. Hi, coming around. I never liked to leave a business, but Brian simply wasn't listening. He missed the deadline paying his brother back, and while it's been a slow process, my advice finally started to sink in. Four months after I left, he made a decision to let Chef Ben go and hired a brand new kitchen staff. On the hotel side, Brian has made the guests a priority, given the curfew to the nighttime entertainment. Hopefully now, with Brian stepping up like a boss, he can lead the beachfront in the right direction. I'm checking into a family-run lodge in Island Park, Idaho, where business has taken a toll on a married couple that has lost their way. We've had a lot of hard years, you know, a lot of arguing. I know we're in trouble. My struggle is not only to fix the lodge. That's 15 years of dust. <coughs> wow. Is that blood? But to renew the passion that they once had. The heart's gone. We need to get that back. It's about to clap. When I first came into the area, I saw this piece of land. It was right next to one of the world's best fly fisheries, the Henry's Fork of the Snake River. And we jumped right on that piece of property and started building the lodge. I thought I could fly fish while I had the phone in my pocket taking reservations. And that actually happened early on in the early days in 1999. Dave would go cut the logs and peel the logs. Sometimes he'd make our sons peel some logs, but they were pretty, pretty little. Growing up here was something special. We literally worked every aspect of it. I started out as a little kid doing dishes and bussing tables and then waiting tables. When we finally got the lodge built and open, we would have like two hour waits and people loved it, loved it. The lodge was full every single night. It was going so well that they were getting ready to expand. And then that summer, uh, we lost my little brother. He was 10 years old when he died. It was, it was dark, it was a dark bad time. And my mom fell out. When we lost that little boy, our life stopped. And I went to bed for three years. 
and I didn't, I didn't get up. So without her here, my dad was forced to run everything by himself, and that's kind of the way he coped with everything. There was just a darkness and a sadness that surrounded our family for years. Business is quite slow. I'd say it's probably 25% compared to 100% back then. Dave and Dee need some help. Zach came back about a year ago to help me run the, the restaurant and lodge. He sees constantly how it's a struggle for me to keep up with the uh, restaurant side, so he came back to help. You take a young man, you stick him in there, and you put him as a general manager. A general manager, in my opinion, is somebody who needs to know the inside and outside of the whole operation. But he doesn't know these things. Dave and I are tired, and it's just like a black hole for us. And we don't want to work this hard anymore. Making a comeback is our last hope. It's my best hope. I've just arrived at Island Park, Idaho, and it is absolutely gorgeous. This city is nicknamed Last Chance because it literally is the last place to stop for food, gas, and lodgings before entering Yellowstone National Park. And this location is one of the most prestigious fly fishing areas anywhere in the world. It's a fisherman's paradise. There it is, Angler's Lodge. How on earth could this place go wrong? Look at that. Gorgeous. Wow. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. I'm Savannah. Savannah Gordon. Nice, nice to see you. Me too. Wow. My goodness me, this place is gorgeous. Who built it? My father. No, stop. Yeah. Seriously. Bare hands. You are kidding me. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's all family business. We're wow. all in it together. Wow. Um, and recently, my oldest brother, Zach, took over the restaurant. So Zach's the restaurant manager. Mm -hmm. Is mum and dad around? I'd love to meet them. Yeah. Oh, I'll follow you. Wow. Uh, look at those beauties up there. That's a vegetarian nightmare up there. Yeah. <laughs> There's fish everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> huh? For real. Hello. I'm Dee Dee. Dee Dee, how are you? Very nice to oh, meet you. Preston, place. my brother. Preston, Preston good mm -hmm. to see you. Likewise. Zach is my other. How you doing, Zach? Sir? Well, this is definitely a family-run business, right? Yes, yeah. sir. Gordon, how are you? The gentle giant with the Midas <laughs> touch by the looks of things. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> this place is gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Um, did you well, build it, really? I did build it. Wow. Just had a vision in my mind, and we put things up, took them down until it looked right. And do you live on the property? I do. We have a cabin right across the way. Just here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me you built that as well. I did. <laughs> Where was the conversation you both had when you decided to go ahead and build it? We found this old beat-up building. There was a for sale sign on the back side of it, so we've made a deal, and here we are, started building. Um, what was the dream, Didi? What was the ambition? Well, you know, we just love, love the beautiful river. And we just thought it would boom, you know, because of the beauty. Yeah. It's really one of the most beautiful spots in Idaho. Right. And people just loved it. So there was like a two hour wait every night. How long ago was that? That was our first two years. Wow. Like our so first two years. That was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So it got off to a great start. What happened then? We hired another chef and then people got mad because we changed the menu. After that, we had a tragedy. After the tragedy, my parents just kind of checked out. It was a really hard time for my family, and um, I think it showed in the lodge. You know, they couldn't put their whole heart into it because their heart was broken. So are you in love with it as much today as you were 10 years ago? I'm very proud of it, and I love it, but I'm really tired. Right. We've been here a long time, you know. Our goal is to have the best restaurant in the area and, and 100 miles around, but. Through the years, we've just uh, lost interest in that. And he's really tired, you know? He doesn't want to work that hard anymore. Right. So you're the restaurant manager? Yes. And where did you train? I worked at a few really nice places when I was living in San Diego. That was where I, probably where I learned the most. Oh, so you went away and then came back? I've been gone for about nine years, yeah. Right. OK, I'm going to get to the room and pack. Um, Zach, why don't you show me to the room? Yes, sir. Oof. God, it stinks, <laughs> yeah. no? What's that smell of lemon? I'm not sure. God, that smell of lemon. I mean, why on earth would you need air freshener in here with such beautiful air? Woof. Yes. The smell is. in here is crazy, no? Let me just quickly open the window. Oh, I guess the back of your throat, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, is someone going to make up the beds? 
They are made. I've seen dog baskets uh, better. How old are they? They put in about five years ago. Bloody hell, seriously. Yeah, oh, they're shit. definitely old. Is that blood? I don't think so. What is that? I'm not sure. It's a stain anyway. Wow. OK, so um, I'll be down in a couple of minutes for a bite to eat. Sounds great. Yeah, what'd you recommend? She does the rainbow trout here. What's her name? Her name is Gina. OK, great. Thanks for the update. Pleasure to meet you. Um, thanks, Zach. Wow. The view is breathtaking, but the colour is depressing. I mean, honestly, everything's dark and grey and dingy. And the pillars, look at those, how uninviting. Like the dog sat on it for the last 10 years. Really do smell. What is that? It's like a piece of candy stuck on a pillow. That's terrible. It's almost like they've fallen out of love for this place. And look at that. Ugh, big, dirty stain. It's sad because it's almost on the verge of being neglected. And you've got two owners that have clearly run themselves into the ground. You think of a lodge in this area, you think of something that's cosy, that's warm, inviting. This is depressing. Oh, dear. Always a great way to find out how often the place is cleaned. Check out the filters. Oh, dear. That's... That's 15 years of dust. <coughs> Shit in there. Turn this thing off. <coughs> it doesn't take much to clean that. Hence the reason why this room stinks of air freshener. Fucking <coughs> hell. So this is Gina. Gina. Hi. Gina. Hey, how are you? Oh, so nice to meet Likewise. you. Likewise, nice to see you too. What do you think is wrong with the business? Staffing issues. Servers, they're just constantly late and, you know, I wouldn't have a manager. But Zach's the manager. Yes, he would come in at 3 or 4 o'clock. Hey, in the he, afternoon? Yeah. But is that Dave's fault? Is he tight? Uh, does he not want to put money into the business? He wants to be as thrifty as possible. Yeah, you but know. this is your menu, right? Mm -hmm. You're the chef, so... Yeah, I know. So who dictates this? Dave, he never let anyone do the food orders, even. No chefs. Really? Mm -mm. But he's controlling you? Yes. And controlling the business mm. tightly, by the yeah. sounds of things. Yeah. Gina, thank you. Thank you. Does your dad realise when you build something this unique, mm -hmm. then you need to have a team to run it? I don't think so, no. I don't think he realises at all. He doesn't know. Yeah. He doesn't know one bit. He's and not... He doesn't let them order their own food? Uh, no. He watches every penny. Is he... That controlling? He really wants to watch what's being sent out and what's being paid for, mm -hmm. the money. Zach, please. Excuse me. Thank you, Zach. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Okay. Wings are for you, sir, with the homemade huckleberry barbecue sauce. Well, thank you. Are the wings fresh? I believe they come frozen. Gina knew I was coming, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't buy fresh chicken locally here. <laughs> Bean served frozen food wasn't the start I was looking for. It looks like it's been dipped in elk's blood. In fact, the food just kept getting worse. Pulling back that ribeye is like pulling back that duvet on my mattress, blood stain, and wow, that's strong in alcohol. He's a good wine for this, right? Art. Gina claims her hands are tied in the kitchen. So at this point, I don't know who to blame. That rice is mush. Who cooked that? It's like oatmeal. What the fuck? Idaho rainbow trout with the herb risotto. Jesus. What's all the uh, squidgy bits around the outside? Those are all the sauces. All the sauces? Yeah. No. Yeah, seriously, yeah. Ah, is that risotto? Or some of the plaster that your dad left over from building the new lodge? <laughs> it's still got the scales on it as well. Why would you leave the skin that's soggy like some used condom? That has to be the worst trout I've ever seen in my entire career. Wow. Does mum and dad see this food? Do they come and have dinner? They hate everything. They hate the, the dish or? Everything. They don't like the way that she does anything. And why is she here? When you're in the heat of the season, we kind of just take what we can get. You can't keep on changing your chef every year. I, I agree. We do it every year. Fuck it now. If this place wasn't run by your parents, 
Would you work here? Hell no. Not, not for a second. I don't want to run a restaurant. How keen are you to get out? I, I'm desperate. And if you got a job tomorrow, would you be off? Yeah, I feel like I've kind of done my part, the part that I told him that I would do. You're obviously concerned, and you're doing it more out of affection as opposed to you really want to be here. Sounds like your mind's made up. Mm -hmm. Wow. Let's get them out, please. Would you both come out, please? Both of us? Would you come out? Both of you. What if I don't want to? <laughs> Jeff Ramsey, nice to meet you. Likewise, good to see you too. Wow, uh, so I'm lost for words. What feedback did you get throughout my lunch? I didn't say anything didn't throughout say a this. Word to Nothing me. at all? Not yet. Course by course, you didn't even talk to them? No. Why not? I figured that was what you were gonna do when we were done. I was hoping at least you're gonna say something to them so they can up their game, no? I actually expected you to say something, and I thought, well, should I ask her? I kept thinking, okay, it must be okay. I haven't heard any comments. Don't you want the truth? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Do you know the owners hate your dishes? No. You don't know the owners hate your food? No, I did not know that. You've got no idea that Dee Dee can't stand the curry? No, I never knew that. I feel like people have been lying to me. Do you know, I don't blame her. Let me, I, I'm gonna be frank. The ribeye was overcooked. It looked like we'd opened at the bottom of the dishwasher and that plug was blocked with bits of floating grease. Oh, oh God. You may find it funny, but you're no, not no, a chef. No, it was funny the way you just described it. No, the but art, I mean... No, I'm not trying to laugh about the ribeye. No, no, but... Uh, fucking hell. Look where we sat, though. If you phoned me on my telephone in the car and asked me what do you think I'm going to be having, I would have never have mentioned those dishes. You did nothing to blow me away. I'm trying to use the ingredients that Dave asked me to use. A lot of it is cost, so I was tied to that. Art, you're the sous chef. Is there any synergy in what you're doing? No. You're just doing it to survive. No one's thinking long term. It's stifling the business. I'm amazed you're still open. Zach, I don't know if you've got one foot in, one foot out. You shouldn't be here. Yeah, I've not been super invested, that's for sure. Get the fuck out of here. So far, I've learned that Dave and Dee Dee are checked out, and Zach just doesn't want to be here. Tonight at dinner service, I'm curious to see if Dave is actually holding Gina back in the kitchen. Um, so Gina, explain the line. Don't stop working, but OK, I work right here in the saute area. And then Art I'm the center care. section doing the burgers, the steaks. And Zach? He mostly stands behind the bar. So he's not the restaurant manager, then. He's a barman. He's supposed to be. He went from the bottom to the top this summer. Nothing in between. But you don't get support from him? Doesn't know how to. Doesn't know how to. What's the uh, microwave for, Gina? Uh, to heat the dip up. Not my choice, but not my choice to do a lot of things. Wow. You're the chef, right? Yes. So what you say goes, no? Should be, chef. Art, did you make that? No. What is that? It's some kind of cheesecake. That was a collapsed cheesecake. It looks like a landmine. What year is that from? Like 1876. Wow. Next ticket. Karina, please. Your salad will be right up. Full time or part time? It's okay to chew gum in front of customers, or Dave just lets it go on? Um, probably not. No, it's very gross. And Zach, I know you can't tell staff what to do, but uh, this young lady's chewing gum. I just, I don't know. You're right, yes. Yeah. No, I know, but um, it's. It's not typical, no, yes. Sorry? Yeah, it's not typical. Laura, please shoot the spigot gum out. Thank you. Thank you. Are you OK? Yeah, I'm fine. You sure? Thank yeah, you. I'm good. What's going on here? Yeah, you're right. She didn't have gum, absolutely. Excuse me for just one second. What the? What's going with the ribeye? Curry that I'm putting with a second, chef. But don't you talk to each other? So the food can hit the window at the same time. If you open up and talk to Art, then Art can take the sauce out of the container and heat it up in a pot. Yeah. 
If you'll hand it to me, I could do it right here. I got lots of time. I'm doing it. Man. For a tiny kitchen trying to expedite this food, it so never needs to be this hard. You know that, Gina? You don't like talking, do you? Um, it's hard for me when I'm working. I'm sorry. But you're doing desserts. Can't the young man do the desserts? Yes. I know. Wow. Everyone tells me I need to relinquish responsibility. The guys are more than capable. He can slice a cheesecake with his nice clothes. Yes, chef. Anyone can do but it. But you prefer wasting time doing it yourself. I know. Just as it couldn't get any worse. The problem with this lodge is becoming more apparent. There's just no communication. Gina doesn't speak to the kitchen. Dave and Dee ignore the problems, and Zach just doesn't know how to take command. Oh, man. So dysfunctional. Yes, my chicken is all cold. Oh, is it? What does she say? The chicken breast is cold. Cold. Gina, this chicken is cold. She would like a new chicken breast on her. Absolutely. New chicken breast, please. Just stop for two seconds. Yes, sir. Zach, get yes, me. Art. Well, I just want you to touch that. Touch it. It's Art. ice cold. It's ice cold. That's what we resulted in sending. You're just drowned, weighing over your head. A mess, a big mess. M E double S. Oh, man. So I was underwhelmed and disappointed. You build this place to the absolute spec, beyond belief, but. I was disappointed in my room. The bed's terrible. Zach, I pulled back the top duvet and there was blood underneath the duvet. The air conditioning filters were just full of shit. It was really shoddy, really shoddy. And it broke my heart. I didn't even build the fucking place. Right. And, and look at the kitchen tonight. What I don't get is the service and the offering, because it was shocking. The chicken goes out ice cold, slightly pink, and nobody cares. And that dreadful cheesecake. Well, that cheesecake collapsed when I left the kitchen the Get other night. Get rid of it. I, I was, I did today. No, you didn't. I know. I mean, you're fucking nuts. Okay. Nuts. You wrote that menu. Gina. I did. You said your hands were tied, so you've got no freedom. Um, Dave gave me more freedom, I believe, than he's given chefs in the past. So sorry, you have freedom. I'm just going on what you told yes, me. I, I mean, he no, gave I'm not me... talking about chefs. And listen, you told me lunchtime, your hands were tied, and you can't buy anything, you can't talk to suppliers, and what Dave says goes. Yes, I mean, basically. Dave, do you handcuff Gina? No, I've not handcuffed her. Only thing I try to do is get her to cost compare. You've got to try to keep food costs lower. Are you telling me that what you're sending is value for money? It's, no, it's not. Nowhere near it. Am I the only one that believes what we're doing is incorrect? Zach, you're not a restaurant manager. Your heart's not in it, young man. Mm -hmm. And I asked you one vital question lunchtime. If your parents didn't own this restaurant, would you be here? And immediately, hell no. I know we're in trouble. The lodges around here are more successful. They're much more successful, and they're not even half as lovely. Can I just have five minutes with you? Do you mind? OK. Let's go, uh... Thank you. This is on a deck of cards at the moment that I feel it's about to collapse because it's built with no infrastructure. Mm -hmm. How's the strain of the business affected you and Dave? We've had a lot of really, really hard years, you know, a lot of arguing. Things that I think are really important, um, he doesn't, and vice versa. Why is he so stubborn in a way that he's so overbearing and so controlling? I think he's just really scared of uh, losing things, so he tries to watch everything, you know, and Dave wanted Zach to kind of learn the business so that in case anything happened to him, that we didn't lose everything, our kids didn't lose anything, all of our investment, right? And you probably know the terrible things that we went through. Well, I disappeared, right? Because I couldn't function, so he did it all himself. 
he ran the business without me and he did the best he could and he just did what he has to do and that's what he does. He does what he has to do and he knew that I was gone and so he, he ran up by himself. Yeah. He needs to accept that he can't continue like this. Mm -mm. His heart might be in the right place, but his head's not in the game. Mm -hmm. You've got the view, the building's there, but right now it's just a shell. It's had better days. For sure. Really, really good days at the first. It was wonderful. We need to get that back. Good morning. Good morning. I came here yesterday and I asked everyone to be open and honest. And the first time I heard any honesty last night was with your mother. Not easy, that is it? I um, don't condone your behavior. My behavior was what? I just felt like your la mm. the language that you used wasn't that of an English gentleman like I would expect. I'm deeply sorry about that. What, what language did I use? A lot of F words. Um, I don't appreciate you using that language with my angel of a mother and my sister. Can I just stop you there? Because you're over-exaggerating a little bit. Because I'm not going to give you brownie points standing in front of your mother telling me how upset you are when you're laughing and giggling with me at the same time. You see it as it is. You have to call it as it is. I like the fact you're standing up. So it takes me to swear for you to step up and act like a man. Please, you don't know shit. Did you just curse? That's disgusting behavior, young man. If you want to have a little chat with me later, together, one-on-one, -on -one, I'd love that. But stop being a hypocrite. You've just sworn in front of your mother. That was a mistake, and I apologize, Mom. The hours you turn in, four o'clock in the afternoon, I don't know how you can call that a full day's work. Gina was frustrated with the fact you don't commit. Staff get no direction. And you walk around shaking cocktails. But I don't need to prove to you my no, work. It. No, no, I'll ask you to prove it to me. Your father put you in charge of the restaurant. So, the big question is, what is your son, Zach, doing here? My view was that he was gonna come help me run the restaurant. He's not even getting feedback or talking to Gina or even just asking servers to not chew gum. Yes, it, it concerns me a great deal. Okay, shall we move on? I've got something really important to tell you. Please, yes. It's something that you're not familiar with. It's called feedback. Well, let's hear it. I spent some time this morning just traveling around, driving, thinking, contemplating, and popping into local places. Fly fishermen, locals, houses, cabins, you name it, I went there. Uh, the sad news is they don't want to come and sort of tell you to your face because it's a small community, um, but I've got the feedback. My daughter had a wedding reception held at the lodge. We'd go back and celebrate, but over the years, things have gone downhill. Dave makes us very, very unwelcome and he has pushed the town away. It doesn't feel like they want us there. The owner seriously, well, needs help. He's a total horse's butt. He has no idea how to handle employees or his customers. There was a time the community rallied round to help them, but he showed no appreciation, so it didn't last very long. After time, he was a jackass again. Couldn't care less, too bad, so much potential there. Maybe they don't care. I don't know why everybody thinks I'm a horse's ass. I guess I am, huh? I try to be friendly to people. I, I treat them just like I treated you. If I come across cold and arrogant. You come across controlling, and yeah. you come across assertive. Yeah. We need to get them on our side, whether we like it or not. Their last comment to me, was that if you are prepared to change and commit to change, then they would walk through those doors. Uh, Dave, I just want to spend a couple of minutes with you. Do you mind? Okay. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you. Why does Zach get so uh, defensive like that? I think insecurity, maybe. Um... Guys, can you just give me five minutes, please? In fact, let's go outside. In fact, let's jump in the car. I mean, honestly, I'm here to help. Yeah. You, you come across so withdrawn. I don't know what to do about that. Where, where did that level of negativity come in? 
Well, it started when I first broke ground here, and all the locals started attacking us and trying to shut us down. And, you know, you have to put your head down and start swinging it. But then you were successful. Yeah, we were successful. And then I hired a shitty chef, and then they all took off and went away. And then I found a good chef, and some of them came back. But I yeah. can't please them all the time. Sure, but it's not all about the chef, Dave. It's, uh, you, you have to take part of responsibility. You know, so these people leave um, and they let you down. You know, at the end of the day, that's on your shoulders, right? Yes. Didi dealt with that tragic loss yeah. of your son, and that took her a long time. Did you seek help when no. you lost your son? No. Did, did, who did you talk to? I no mean, one. No one. No. You, so you just came back into work. Yeah. Right? The next day. The next day. There was no one here. I mean, how did you get through? How? Well, I just get through. You know. You you go day by day. Time time helps heal, you know. But there's a hole in your heart that never heals, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You're never going to. Yeah. But have you expressed this to Dee Dee and that that's how you dealt with it? Because I think she's a little bit in the dark. I think she struggles to read you. Well, maybe. I just deal with it by on a daily basis. You know, there's not a day goes by I don't think of my son and the loss, but, you know, you, you move on, you know. I still have to make a living. I still have to take care of Dee Dee's feelings and the kids and all of that. You know, sure. the kids got spoiled in the process because we coddled them a little bit, and yeah. it's obvious. And, and Zach's a product of that. But, yeah. you know, I, I come from, I believe that they should earn it. Yeah. But I'm in a situation, and I have been in a situation where you know, my wife doesn't agree with that philosophy. So it's a constant friction. And same way with managing our restaurant and our business. She comes in here and wants to coddle employees and doesn't expect them to hold to standards. And I come in and I try to get yeah. them to hold to standards and I'm an asshole and we have conflict at home. So uh, as a result of that, I've tried to minimize the conflicts and let Zach deal with the restaurant because that's where most of our conflicts sure. were. The business may have suffered. I may have been an asshole on occasion. I don't know what to do about that. You know, she, she doesn't understand my personality, but I'm a... Sometimes I take no prisoners and it offends people and Dee Dee doesn't understand that mindset. Mm -hmm. She's more of a, a off fluff. You can't build this thing like that. You're a tough fucker on the outside, but you have a heart and you can show emotion. I have a big heart. Then people need to see it. Yeah. I'd like to talk to you about something that's been missing. When you built this place, we started off so well, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. So I've put something together that I think will help reinstate that love. Yeah. Bring that back to the forefront. Let's have a look. Wow, who's that there? Hey. Um... <laughs> look at that hair. Yeah. <laughs> Man, what happened? <laughs> Hell if <have> I know. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Wow. Talk about handcrafted. Even the boys. Yeah, look how, little, look how little they are, yeah. yeah. That's rare. Dave Smiley. Yeah, that is rare. Yeah, that, that, that I would have freezed that one there. <laughs> oh, man. Incredible. You know, sometimes it's easy to forget. This is why you built this amazing lodge for the family, right, Didi? Yes. Oh. Chokes me up. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Now, that's a picture I haven't seen forever. We need to frame that one on the wall. <laughs> These are the most amazing pictures. Beautiful. So young. <laughs> Something quite magical about that first fish, right? Dee Dee, when you see those amazing pictures, what goes through your mind? Just the memories and dreams that we had, you know, and everything just getting better and better and better, you know, and, and then just enjoying the property all of our life, right? It's a stern reminder to why you built this place. And just watching your face light up, reminiscing in some of those amazing times, it's so nice to see. Yeah. I didn't see it when I arrived. And that's what's been missing. Yeah. Those were good times. When we look back at the pictures that of building the place, it brings back that energy that we had then, and um, it really does mean something. You know, we had we've we've raised a family here, we've we've raised our kids here. All those memories were good memories, so it's always been worth fighting for. For me, she needs to fall back in love with it, but more importantly, with each other. 
Yeah. How important is this to you both? It's everything. It's the world, yeah. It's the world to us. It's all we have when it's done and said, you know. We spent our best years building this place and running it. And... You're confident we can get back there? You've got it in you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I feel so much better because now we're moving past all the bad things and we're starting to take a look towards the good things. After boosting the spirits of Dee Dee and Dave, it was time to elevate the lodge itself. My team spent all night working to turn the Angler's Lodge into a destination worthy of its rich family legacy. Let's go. I can't wait to show the family what we've done. In you go, please. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Enjoy. Wow, look at that. Come on, jump in. Oh, how beautiful. Perfect. Oh, my God. Wow, look at that. Oh. Gone is that hideous blood color. <laughs> um, inviting, gorgeous. Let's start off with that amazing reclaimed wood. <laughs> the bedspreads, brand new. Oh, I love it. New carpets. It's just beautiful. Isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. I think you've uh, you've opened our eyes to what the place can be. It's, you've done a great job. It's just gorgeous. beautiful. It's amazing. It was just like a new joy. Kind of like when we opened it up the first time. It was like a brand new joy. It's something that we can reach for after going through such hard times. So we know what to do now. Look at the rocking okay. chair. <sighs> Nice. We don't even want to leave. Oh, it's just beautiful. Hello. Hi, Hi guys. Yeah. Good. You guys here to check in? Yes. yes we Great. Are. Oh. Wow. Oh my gosh. Hi, Alex. How are you? Good to Good. see you. Good to see you. You should see what they did to the rooms today. It was, it's amazing. I've created a delicious new menu, perfect for this region. And my team have been training the staff non-stop to prepare them for a successful relaunch tonight. Here is our dinner menu. I've invited the locals back and a local food critic, so the lodge can rebuild these important relationships and get their reputation back on track. Everybody's attention just for a second. Our critic is sitting, watching, paying attention to everything that's going on. Thank you. Hello, we just wanted to welcome you all to the lodge and I hope you're enjoying your evening and uh, we appreciate you all coming in and trying us again and uh, we'd love to have you back. Can't beat the setting, of course, and from now on our food's going to match all those things. So I hope you're having a great time. Very nice to have everybody back. Okay. Welcome, have a great time. <laughs> One short rib right up here. What are you doing? What are you doing? For the short rib, right? Right now it's going. Three ribeye. Yes, chef. And then you're doing short rib. Are we send the appetizers? Look, look at me. No, you know, I didn't, chef. So, it's my so, fault. Oh, for fuck's sake. Gina, Gina, come here, man. Come here. You're not even helping yourself. You're not talking to me, and you're just going into one. Okay. I'm going to force you to talk. Okay, so. Gina. Yes. Are you okay? I'm okay for you now. You sure? I promise. Okay, good. Again, Art's there. He can serve the soup. Art, right, would you please? Absolutely. OK, soup boiling. We'll send the soup with one nice kale salad. So next up, Art, dress me a kale salad. No, 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 I've got the salad. you got the salad? OK. Yes. Why can't he make the salads? Never has to be this difficult. But you can't work on your own. I've worked on my own many times, Chef. Gina, yes. Gina, come here. Come here. Are you listening or are you giving up? No, no, by no means. I mean. told you, you cannot work on your own. You just shout, I work on my own all the time. Is it best you go now? No. You can't work on your own. I understand, right? Chef. You're going to sink this place. Get a grip. OK? okay? Yes, it's not difficult. Next ticket. Um, yeah, FYI in there tonight. Gina's struggling. Yeah. Kurt stepped up, Art stepped up. Uh, but with a menu that easy, if your mind's not in that, uh, yeah, you've got no chance. Kale salad in the window, table 26, seat one. Thank you. Is that for the uh, critic? Yes. Any seasoning? I did salt, pepper, and Give me a fresh one, please. Um, Art, take over, please. Uh, Gina, take a step back. Art, Gina's on the desserts. Let's go. Okay, I got chicken in the oven. 
So were those three apple crisp in the oven or you forgot them? They are in the oven, chef. Yeah. Uh, Dunny, reheating a dessert, I expect you to nail. That's your yeah. table. You know that nice and gently. Yes, sir. Off we go. Roasted chicken with a crispy skin. And we can't do a scoop of ice cream. No answer. We can't do a scoop of ice cream. It's cold in the middle. OK, I will be done. No, stop. Stop. I want you to take your apron off and okay. then go home. Art, take over, please. OK. How's my desserts? Ready, roll? It's not working, is it? I'm just nervous. No, it's not working. You know it's not working. I'm not going to shout, I'm not going to scream. It's just, it's unfair. It's unfair in you and it's unfair in the lodge. You're sending a short rib to a table that we haven't even sent the starters. No. You, you, you're, you're destroying the lodge. Okay. I've got a critic that's just landed. One mistake like that and this place is going to close. Heard, understood. I'd like to finish out the evening and see how it goes. It's not working. If you're going to go back in that kitchen, what are you going to do differently? What's the point? I want to keep working so that I can get it down. You're not listening. You're not listening. You're not, even, you're not even prepared to take any advice, any help. I know. It's been a long time, Chef, since somebody was telling me exactly what to do, and it's different for me. We, we can't continue like this. There's no point in fighting this. Yes, Chef. Oh, man. OK. Dee Dee, darling. Dave. Gina. It's just not up to speed. Yeah. Right? If you can't work with this menu, it's not going to happen, so... Yeah. The good news is Art and Kurt already up to speed. Already. Mm. Good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good news. Uh, good feedback for the customers? Incredible. Uh, really Everybody good was very happy, loved yeah. everything, compliments all around, not a single complaint. That's great. great. Any difficult questions from the critic? Nothing difficult at all, no. He was uh, he's very friendly, very nice, and just really enjoying everything. He's like, this was simple, and it was beautiful, and it was perfect. Awesome. That's nice. Good night, right? It was a really good yeah. night. You happy? Yeah. I am happy. Good. Very happy. <laughs> that's nice. I'm just so happy to have that's so nice people to see back in here. You yeah, know? well, I mean, they're happy, right? Yeah. That's the most important thing. But there's one tiny missing link. Someone that I've arranged for all three of you to meet. Her background is extraordinary. She knows the area inside out. And I've asked her to come here for a month and help set this place up and I want you to benefit from her knowledge. Please welcome Emily Hello, Brown. Hello, how are you? I'm Emily. Dee Dee. Dee Dee, pleasure. Hi. Zach. Nice to meet you, Zach. Hi, Emily. Nice to meet you. Today. Welcome. Nice to see you. Likewise, welcome. Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Um, first of all, she knows this business inside out and she's excited to work as a consultant for a month and help set this place up for a very, very busy season. Yeah, I've heard all about you guys. Really yeah. excited to get you guys where you really need to be, so. Well, welcome. welcome. Um, I want you two to do something you haven't done for a long time. <laughs> I'd like you to take your dear lady and go and have dinner. Oh, nice. Won't that be nice? Yeah. Tonight, you... Zach's got a table for you. Oh, uh, that'd be great. Excellent. It's the first time I've seen them holding hands. Do you? Mm -hmm. See Dave smiling? It's like the pressure's lifted off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the love is rekindled for sure. And I'm really excited to have everybody in Island Park start coming back again and being excited about the lodge like they were when we first built it. Uh, my time is done. You're Are you leaving now? Are you leaving now? I am leaving now. You guys have a great spark here. Trust me, you need to show it. Don't stop. Good night. Take Good night. care. God bless. Thanks. Thank Bye. You. Enjoy dinner. Thank you so much. Take care. <laughs> Here's to me and you, man. Cheers. Better days ahead. Yeah, to a new lodge. Wow, what a night. Oh, man. That's better. Man, that's cold out there. There's a fucking handbrake. Where's the gear stick on the steering wheel? I shouldn't drive. Fucking useless. Man. <laughs> After I left the lodge, the family embraced the many changes 
and is excited about the future. Both Dee Dee and Dave have rekindled their passion. You're doing good, honey. We're a good team. And are enjoying working together to make Angler's Lodge the place to be once again.